Well, good evening, friends. My name is Joel Frieza with Kingdom Reformation Movement. I want to welcome you to our midweek broadcast, Supernatural Wednesday. Indeed, we're looking forward to a tremendous time in the presence of the Lord. So, Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to share your word from this platform. And Lord, we pray that as your word goes forth this evening, it will come forth with power, with might, with accuracy. I thank you for all that you're going to speak into our hearts and into our hearing in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, friends, I trust that you're looking forward to receiving from the Lord. And this evening, I want to share with us briefly on our need to contend for the faith. Our need to contend for the faith. There are many who are no longer contending for the faith. They are simply going along with the flow. They are going along with the drift. And so what you have is that you have people who are drifting away from the original moorings, drifting away from the, the, the authentic gospel. And this was the same problem that faced the apostles in the times of the early church. And this evening, I want to look at what Jude had to say to us. He had some profound words. Um, and Jude, in his writing, he wrote just one chapter, but what a powerful chapter it was. And Jude starts off by talking about the fact that he wanted to write about the common salvation that he shared with his hearers. But he had to change his plans. He had to change his topic about what he wanted to write about because of this threat that was confronting the church. And so he, he wrote about the need to contend for the faith. Let's see why Jude had to change what he wanted to write originally about the common salvation. Let's see what Jude had to say about contending for the faith. I'm reading from Jude, verse 3. It has only one chapter. And listen to what Jude says. He says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you, concerning our common salvation. So Jude is saying, I was going to write to you about our common salvation. And we don't know what, you know, what Jude wanted to write because he never wrote it. But listen to what he says. He says, I found it necessary. This is what he's saying. He found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you, in other words, encouraging you, compelling you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. So Jude is saying, I started off with this intention to write to you about our common salvation, but I found it necessary. In other words, he was compelled to change his plans about what he wanted to write to the believers. And sometimes God is going to change our plans. God is going to impress upon us a different course of action, a different course of direction. Those who are sensitive to the voice of God and to the leading of God, sometimes God is going to speak in your ear. God is going to give you guidance and direction to change your plans. And this is why we have to be always be flexible to what the Lord will have us to do. It is always very important for us to be, you know, tapped in and tuned in 
to the voice of God because God is a God who will sometimes cause us to change our plans. And this is exactly what happened to Jude. He had to change his plans. He started off by wanting to write about salvation and the Lord told him to change his plans. He instead, want, he, he instead wrote about contending for the faith. Now why is Jude changing his plans and writing to the believers because he's writing to believers why is he telling believers about their need he says to contend earnestly and the word contend speaks of a struggle it speaks of a fight it speaks of a battle Judas saying you're gonna to have to fight you're gonna to have to struggle for the faith. Why is Jude writing that? Let's see what he says in the very next verse. Verse 4. It says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed. Notice what Jude is saying. He says, There have been certain men who have infiltrated the church. He says they have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation on godly men who turn the grace of our Lord God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jude is giving us the reason why the Lord impressed upon him the need to change his plans, to change what he intended to write to the believers about. He was starting off writing about salvation, but the Lord impressed upon him the need to change his plans. And so he's now writing about contending for the faith. Why is he writing about contending for the faith? Because Jude has gotten word that certain men, ungodly men, have infiltrated the ranks of the church, the ranks and the precincts of the church. And he says these ungodly men, they are doing two things. One, they are turning the grace of God into lewdness. And secondly, he says they are denying the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is why Jude changed his plans about what he wanted to write about. Because these men who had infiltrated the church, they were like a cancer. They were like, you know, um, poisoning the church. And so Jude had to write to the believers to tell them that they need to contend for the faith. They need to fight. They need to struggle. They need... To stand up for what they were thought, what they were taught, for what they were, they were, uh, for what they they had believed, the orthodoxy of the gospel, the values and the principles of the gospel. You know, when James talks about the faith, there he's talking about the system of faith, the system of of values and the belief system. You know, where we believe in Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is Lord and that we are saved through Jesus Christ all of these doctrines and tenets of the faith were under attack they were under assault by these men who had crept in unnoticed and they had infiltrated the church and they were sowing seeds what were the seeds that they were sowing they were turning the grace of God into lewdness. And when the word lewdness is used there, it, it, it talks about licentious uh, sexual behavior, immoral behavior. And are we seeing that in the church today? Yes, there are many in the church. They are turning the grace of God into a license to sin. 
a license to do all sorts of things. And when you do that, what you are doing, you are denying the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, you know, the people who deny Jesus Christ are not just those who say, I don't want Jesus or I don't believe in Jesus. But when you teach things that are contrary to what Jesus taught, you are denying Jesus. When you teach lies or falsities or, you know, the, another gospel, a false gospel, a fake gospel, when you do these things, you are denying Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus says, he who does not gather with me, you are scattering. So if you are not teaching what Jesus taught, if you're not teaching what the apostles taught in the early church, then that is tantamount to denying Jesus Christ. And this is what these men who had infiltrated the church, this is what they were doing. They were leading the people down the wrong path. They were leading the people astray. They were leading the people to destruction. And this is exactly what is happening today because you have certain people who have infiltrated the church and they are preaching another gospel. They are preaching another Jesus. They are preaching another spirit. This is what Paul talked about uh, when he wrote to the Galatians. They were preaching a false gospel. They were preaching a false Jesus. And Jesus said, the way that you will know those who are false from those who are genuine is to examine their fruit. He says, by their fruit, you will know them. By their fruit, you will know them. What is the fruit of their lives? What is the fruit of their conduct? What is the fruit of of their doctrine and their teaching and their practices this is how you will know those who are fake and those who are false from those who are genuine you need to examine the fruits this is what james is saying he says there's this group of men they are turning the grace of god into lewdness into a license to sin a license to practice all types of immoral behavior and you examine many many people these days they're not preaching on sin they're not preaching on holiness they're not preaching on righteousness they're not preaching on hell why because they are preaching a gospel that makes people comfortable in their sins. Come as you are and stay as you are. They're not telling people about their need to come out of sin, to come out of darkness. So you find that they preach, you know, it's a, it's, it's a gospel, a feel-good gospel. There's no, there's no conviction in their message. There's no, um, there's no challenge in their message. It's all about making you feel good, making you feel comfortable while you are on your way to a Christless eternity. Because this is what happens. But you examine the teachings of Jesus. You examine the teachings of John the Baptist. You examine the teachings of Paul. They always talked about the need to come out of that life of sin and rebellion and the importance of, a, of, of aligning yourself with the kingdom of God, the, 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 the doctrines of God. You know, we're not, we, we, we are not saying that, you know, our message should only be on sin and hell and unrighteousness and so on. But our gospel needs to be balanced. It needs to be balanced. You have to incorporate these things as, as part of your message. If all you do is preach about, you know, the goodness of God, 
and the grace of God, and you don't talk about the fact that the, the God that we serve, he's a God of judgment, he's a God of righteousness, he's a God of holiness. Then what you do, you present a skewed picture of who God is. And people feel that there's no need to repent, that there's no need to walk in holiness and righteousness. We're not saying that we are saved by our own acts of righteousness. But because we are saved by grace through faith, we walk and we conduct ourselves a certain way. And we always need to be reminded that the God we serve, He is an all-consuming fire. He is a God of judgment. He is a God of justice. And there is a day of judgment coming. Yes, we are in the period of grace. But not because we are in a, the period of grace. It means that we have a license to sin and to do whatever we want. No. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. You cannot continue in sin. Paul says you cannot continue in sin. For he who yields his members are, are, are servants of sin. You are going to be in bondage to sin. You have to come out of sin. You have to come out of that lifestyle. You have to come out of all of those things. You cannot continue in that and say, you know, the grace of God Yes, God is a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. But this same God says, I will not always strive with man. This same God, he is a God of judgment. He is a God of justice. And you know, it is folly to think that you can continue to sin with impunity and there will be no consequences. That is a lie from the pit of hell. No, you cannot continue in sin. You cannot continue to trample underfoot the grace of, of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. You cannot continue to deny Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews, For if you sin willfully after you have received knowledge of the truth, then there remaineth no longer any sacrifice for sins, but a certain uh, a fearful looking of fiery judgment of which God is going to consume the enemies. You cannot continue in willful sin and rebellion. No, because when you get born again, you get a new nature. This is what the born again experience does. It gives you a new nature. A nature that hates sin. And so if you, if you like sin and you, you feel no conviction for sin, then you need to ask yourself, are you in the faith? Are you in the faith? Because there are many people, they are deceived. They are not in the faith. They have not been genuinely born again. And regenerated and I'm saying to you if you are comfortable in sin if you are comfortable to live a lifestyle of sin then you need to examine yourself and see if you are really born again if you are really in the faith because if you are really and truly born again you can never be comfortable in sin because you have a new nature a nature that hates sin you have a nature. We're not saying that you wouldn't stumble and fall. But when you fall, you will get up. You're not going to stay in that fallen state. This is the difference between someone who is born again and someone who is not. They will not stay down. They will get up from that place and, and, and that position of sin. They're not going to continue in that. Why? Because they have a new nature that hates sin, that hates that, 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 that lifestyle and that nature. And that is the difference. And I want you to hear what Jude had to say, why he says we need to contend for the faith. 
It's very important that we hear what Jude had to say. Because as I said, while God is a God of forgiveness, of grace and mercy, he is also a God of justice. And this is what Jude was reminding his hearers about. I want you to hear what he had to say in the very next verse, verse 5. This is what, we say, what he says. He says, but I want to remind you. I want to remind you, saints. You need to be reminded. He says, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved, and Jude is going to give us three examples of people who receive judgment from the Lord. I want you to hear what he has to say. He says, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. So he's giving the first example. He's saying, though you once knew this, some of you, you've forgotten it. So I need to remind you that this God that we serve, he's a God of justice. He's a God of judgment. He says, although God saved the children of Israel from Egypt, there were some of them who didn't believe. And because they did not believe, he says, God destroyed them. They were destroyed in the wilderness. This is what Judas said. He's giving the first example that this God that we serve, he is a God of justice. He is an all-consuming fire. We need to be reminded of that. We cannot take for granted the goodness of God, the favor of God, the grace of God, because this God who is gracious and merciful is also a God of standards. He's a God of justice. He's a God of holiness. He's a God of righteousness. He says, be ye holy as I am holy. And he's going to hold all of us to account one day. There is a judgment. There is a day of judgment coming. Listen to the second example that Jude gave. So first he gave the example of the children of Israel, the chosen people. Yet, although they were the chosen people, they were destroyed because they did not believe. In other words, they did not contend for the faith. They allowed themselves to drift. And this is what, this is the danger when you fail to contend for the faith because you will drift. You will drift. And if you keep drifting, eventually you will be destroyed. This is what Jude is saying. Listen to the second example in verse 6. He says, and the angels, so not just the chosen, but the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He says, God has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. You will recall there was an incident that took place in Genesis chapter 6. It says that the sons of God, when they saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, they left their estate, they left their domain in the heavenlies and they came down and they cohabited with the daughters of men and they gave birth to giants this hybrid race and because of this hybrid race God had to take drastic action because this hybrid race it caused an increase in sin and sinfulness to the point where it says that all of the thoughts and the intents of men was an evil. Not only that, what these angels did, they corrupted the genes. And this was a strategy of the devil to try to interrupt and prevent 
uh, Jesus Christ from coming because we know that God had said in Genesis, earlier in Genesis, that the seed of the woman will destroy the head of the serpent. So what Satan had tried to do with these fallen angels cohabiting was to corrupt the genes of man so that the Messiah could not come. This is why God had to take such drastic action of wiping out the whole human race because the genes had become corrupted. The only one who remained uncorrupted was Noah and his family. This is why only Noah and his family were spared. Everyone else had become corrupted. And so God had to take very drastic action. This is why he sent the flood to destroy man from off the face of the earth and start over again. So I want you to see, but the, the, the God did not just take action against the men who were corrupted with the flood. But what Judah is saying is that those angels who left their first estate, I mean, and these angels, they were created good. But what happened? They became corrupted. They became corrupted. And what Judas say, because they left their first estate, because they left their primary domain and went after strange flesh, because angels were not allowed to intermarry and to cohabitate with with women, it was against God's plan and purpose. And because they did that, Judah saying, this God that we serve, he is a God of justice. He is a God of judgment. He says these angels, they are being reserved in everlasting chains. And they are going to be judged he says they are going to be judged. They are under everlasting change in darkness. Even as we speak, these angels, they are in chains, waiting judgment. So this is the second example that Jude is giving us. That this God that we serve is not just a God of grace and forgiveness and love. He is a God of judgment. But let's see the third example that Jude gave. He says in verse 7, he says, As Solomon, as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality, and gone after strange flesh, I want you to notice the words that Jude is using. He says, these people in Sodom and Gomorrah, they gave themselves over to sexual immorality. They became depraved. He says they went after strange flesh. We're going to talk about that. He says they are set forth as an example. So God in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah with brimstone and fire, it was to set an example. It was to let all those who come after know that this God that we serve is a serious God. And God described what the people in Sodom and Gomorrah did as an abomination, as something wicked and evil. And because of what they did, he rained down fire and brimstone and destroyed that city from off the face of the earth. And he says, God made them an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. But I want to talk about that because even in the church today, some have turned grace into lewdness. Some have turned grace and they have gone after strange flesh, just like these people in Sodom and Gomorrah. There are people in the church they are condoning and endorsing the gay and the lesbian lifestyle, an abomination in the eyes of God. And this is, this is what Jude is saying. He's saying that God made an example of these people 
And when he talks about strange flesh, it is because they left the natural use. The men, they left the natural use of the woman and they went with other men. Strange flesh, men with men, an abomination in the eyes of God, wicked and evil. And this is why God rained down fire. He says, likewise, the woman leaving the natural use of the men, woman going with woman, strange flesh. This was an abomination in the eyes of God, wicked and evil. And this is why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. And what Jude is saying, he's saying, the same God that we worship is the same God who took action in these three instances and brought judgment on those people who allow themselves to drift and allow themselves to get entangled in sin and sinful behavior. This is why Jude is saying we need to contend for the faith. You need to struggle. You need to fight for the values and the belief system that you had received. Because really, this is the only way that you will avoid from allowing yourself to drift and to fall into sin and receive judgment. Judas saying, do not for once think that you will be spared if you allow yourself to drift. He says, if God didn't spare the children of Israel who didn't believe, if God didn't spare those angels that sinned and left their first estate, if God didn't spare the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, Jude's point is, what makes you think that he's going to spare you? He says, if that's the way you're thinking, you are deceived. This is why he's saying we need to contend for the faith. Because of what is at stake. Your very salvation is at stake. Your very life is at stake. This is why we need to contend for the faith. We're not contending for the faith to win some argument. No, this is not about arguments. We're not trying to get into arguments or debate. You are contending for the faith to ensure that you remain connected, that to ensure that you remain connected to the gospel, the authentic gospel, and that you don't drift away. Because those who drift away and keep being drifted away, eventually they will be destroyed. Just like the children of Israel who didn't believe, they were destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. Just like the angels who disobeyed were destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. Just like the people in Sodom and Gomorrah who drifted and went after strange flesh. So Jude is giving us a warning. This is why he had to change his writing. He's giving us a warning. He says, contend for the faith. Don't allow yourself to be deceived by these men who have, have infiltrated the church, preaching another gospel. Many of them, they don't even base their messages on the scripture, but they base their messages on some motivational talk or some motivational speech and they add a scripture here and they add a scripture there not rightly dividing the word of God Judas saying you need to be careful you need to be careful he says you will know them by their fruit and so I want to put you on guard that we need to be discerning Judas Jude saying there have been certain men that have infiltrated the church. They are turning, they are, they, they are turning the grace of God into lewdness, into a license to sin. He says they are, they, they are denying Jesus Christ. Judas saying, do not allow yourself to get caught up in that web of deception. Do not allow yourself to buy and to, you know, accept 
these doctrines and these teachings because Jude is saying if you do it's going to cause you to drift away and those who drift away eventually will be destroyed this is the message that Jude was trying to give us and so tonight friends I want to encourage you to contend for the faith I want to encourage you to get into the word of God yourself you need to be grounded in the word of God yourself. Yes, we go, we listen, we go to church, we hear preachers. But the most important thing that you can do for your spiritual development is for you to get into the word of God yourself. Just like the Bereans. This is how you will know what is truth from what is fake and what is false. You need to spend the time in the word of God studying the word of God for yourself this is how you will know what is true from what is fake you have to get the word of God in yourself this is why the Bible tells us to meditate on the word day and night then you're gonna make your way successful this is how you contend for the faith by getting the word of God in you the word of God is like food so you need to eat food every day to be healthy you need to consume the word of God you need to let that word of God you know flow through you flow in you day in and day out this is how you contend for the faith and then you need to be discerning be very watchful be very discerning of who you sit under, of what you allow yourself to imbibe, of what you allow yourself to consume. Not everyone that preaches and says, Lord, Lord, is of God. And you need to be discerning. You need to be very discerning. Amen. So Father, we just thank you for this word to our hearts and to our hearing tonight. And Lord, I pray that you will impress on each of us the need to contend for the faith, to contend for the faith. Lord, the need, Lord, to be discerning. I pray, Lord, that you will give us a spirit of discernment, that we will not be deceived. We will not have itching ears. We will not be running to and fro behind every wind of doctrine but lord we will anchor ourselves we will plant ourselves and we will allow your your, your your word to produce growth in us and through us and father i just thank you that you're going to bring stability into our hearts into our lives you're going to bring strength into our hearts and into our lives and lord i just thank you we commit our lives to you and Lord, we thank you for all that you will continue to do in and through our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, I trust that you were blessed. I trust that you were encouraged by the word this evening. And I just want to encourage you in the things of the Lord. Continue to build yourself up on your most holy faith. And until I see you in our next broadcast, I want to challenge you to plant your feet on the ground, to look up, because your redemption draweth nigh. And of course, always remember that the kingdom of God is at hand. My name is Joel Fraser with Kingdom Refor Reformation Movement. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you.